So this episode takes place over about a week and it's quite fragmented. It has a lot of topics covered and I'll include timestamps in the description so you can click ahead to the topics that you're interested in. Enjoy. Welcome back to Who Chose. So I've had a little bit of a problem. Uh, I went away for a couple days and left all the hydroponic systems to their own devices and this happened. Uh, I think I'm pointing at the right thing here. I'll show you in a sec. Obviously, the potatoes are doing fantastically. They've sprouted through. We'll get to those in a sec too, but let me just show you what this is. That, <laughs> that is me having too many tomatoes on the vine and it overloading the jute twine that was holding it up and the tomato plant just falling to the ground. So it's still alive. I'm hopeful for the fruit being fine as well uh, because it's been photosynthesizing on the ground. <laughs> the jute twine didn't actually break, that undid. So I'm gonna go along and shore up these knots and then we're gonna look at a way of managing tomatoes and how to string them up that isn't jute twine. So let me just string this up first. It actually looks like the jute twine did break. So I'm going to need to find a stronger alternative to jute twine. So to hold the tomatoes up, I'm gonna be using these. These are tomato hooks, I think I searched online for. And they use a stronger poly string that you can then connect the tomatoes to. So the way they work is you can string them up above the tomatoes and as the tomatoes grow and you need to lower the plant down you can have a line at the top that you unhook this from and then twist and the line drops down one section because it's pre-wrapped around this metal spindle. So I'm going to go ahead and install a stainless steel line from that side over to this side and Along the length, I'm going to have some metal eyelets that will hold the line from dropping down off the roof of the greenhouse. So I'm going to go ahead and install the line and the eyelets. Okay, so I haven't used these before, um, but it's the first time for everything. So I'm just gonna hang this off the taut line which I've installed at the top and that'll allow me to shuffle all the plants along as the growth continues. So I'll just hang it like that and I should be able to start supporting this plant with it. Now this would obviously be easier with two people but I don't have that option right now. So I'm actually going to tie off this jute twine and I'm gonna use a couple of these tomato clips uh, to secure the base of the line to the base of the plant. So you can see here how the tomato clip uh, holds the jute twine taut and this style, of, this style of tape gun doesn't. So I'm gonna utilize the clip in the same spot as that jute twine. And I should get a nice tight hold like that. And I can make my way up and do the same all the way along the plant. So I have lost a few tomatoes from having that plant fall, but it's still alive. It is the one that got flooded last episode, so it's really not having a great time. Sorry, buddy. This one should ripen on its own, and even if it doesn't, I can use it in some green tomato chutney. So not all is lost, and uh, a valuable lesson learned. <laughs> so I'm now gonna go along and replace all of the jute twine with this stronger poly line and that way I don't risk having the same thing happen again. It also allows me to swivel these and drop the plants down and move them along as they grow taller and taller because I'm pretty sure they're indeterminate. All right, so it's been a couple of days since I tied these guys up. So this is obviously going to take course over a couple of days, this update. Um, and as you can see, 
More tomatoes have started ripening. Actually, I'll take you for a look quickly. So they're getting a really nice red color. Um, some are starting to split like this one here, but they are turning really nicely. So I don't think I'll have any problem with uh, these tomatoes coming through. In fact, that one's probably almost ready. I love these misshapen tomatoes. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Real food. Okay, so I wanna take you over to the potatoes and we're gonna do the next stage of the potato growing experiment. All right, so as you can see, well, behind me, I've harvested all of the lettuce that I had in the NFT system. I donated that this morning and the potatoes have come up through the sugarcane mulch and have presented themselves and they're coming through everywhere, really. Now, uh, I would have actually preferred to have kept covering them at about this stage. I was away in Melbourne and they came through and they've got to this stage obviously. However, you meant to cover them pretty much as, as soon as they show through. So this is really interesting to see though, uh, like you've got many different stages of the potato plants coming through and you can see them poking through pretty much everywhere. There's another one there. Um, there's one under here as well. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to cover them all so that they keep pushing up and these ones will then become the stalks and push out more potato tubers where I've added more mulch over the top. So I'm just gonna grab some mulch. This is super exciting. I've never ever, I mean, I've grown potatoes, but to the extent of like sticking them in the ground and watching them come up. So uh, I've never actually tried to do this method where I forget what it's called, hilling maybe? That's the name of it just there. And essentially, I was unaware of this because I'm not a potato farmer. So I'm just gonna bury everything in mulch and try and get as much height out of these mounds. Oh no, I actually wanted to empty this out anyway. So that's a good thing I am emptying it out by accident. <laughs> It's been raining a ton here. So this has been absolutely saturated with hydroponic uh, with, with rain, sorry. And um, I would say that the hydroponic nutrient in the cocoa and whatnot uh, and the perlite is exhausted. So I wanted to refill that rain gutter grow system at the bottom. Um, and now that I've knocked it out, well, that's fantastic because that is empty and I can now replace it and just let it fill up naturally with hydroponic nutrient. I'll do the other side too, because that's the low side. Awesome. Very good. Now we can just replace this. My hands are wash. And that, that'll just fill up. And we can continue covering these potato seedlings. Seedlings? Plants? What do you call them? I don't know. Now this would obviously be a lot easier if I had sides to this and I did consider uh, making higher boxed edges and I probably will end up having some kind of barrier to stop this mulch from, uh, I guess, falling out. Uh, I'll have to come up with some kind of idea for that. Um, but that's a future issue. All right. So it's all pretty well covered and we'll see how it grows. <laughs> all right, so I emptied this NFT out uh, this morning and gave away the produce. And now I'm going to refill it uh, with some seeds that I've been starting in my propagation area and restart the grow. Uh, but before I do that, I actually wanna change the reservoir. And as you can see, uh, we've got a bit of algae in there, so I will actually be needing to uh, change this top because that is just clear plastic over the top of it. And um, 
I'm going to put over the top something that's gonna give a little bit more light resistance to it. So for me to empty out this res, all I have to do is lift this up because I've left this part uh, unfastened so that I can get into where I can empty it. I turn. There we go. Now I'm just gonna turn off the pump. While I'm waiting for that to drain, I'm just gonna wipe down these channels. Now, as you can see, it's pretty bloody disgusting in there. Um, so I'm gonna hit it with the hose and try and get as much of that out as possible. I'm gonna take care of this problem in the near future. Not today, um, but I should be able to stop that by blocking out most of the light. So I'm not particularly worried about it happening again once I get this problem sorted. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. There's a few bits left, but uh, even the microscopic bits are going to start up algal bloom. So I really just need to take care of the problem that's causing it, which is the light penetration. And uh, I'll take care of that later. So I'll turn off the drain and we can fill it up. I'll leave that running. And then once we know the level that we're filling it up to, we can then mix the nutrients. So these are the plants that I'm just using the NFT as a nursery for in the meantime. Uh, and they're doing really well, at least until I have a plan for them in the future, which I kind of do. Um, a new system maybe, maybe. All right, so this is just a mixture of cos over on this side and loose leaf salad mixed lettuce. So. Uh, half will be, well, it's definitely not half, but some will be red and some will be green mixed leaf salad lettuce. So let's plant those in the system uh, while we're waiting for the res to fill. I love these cos lettuce, like, they just go so well in NFT. They, they head up really nicely. Um, and even with uh, some of the nutrient problem I had in my last grow, they just did not care. They just grew and grew perfectly. Cos is one of my favorite lettuces to eat too. It's just an all round good, good guy cos. <laughs> Obviously didn't thin that one out. <laughs> I'm just gonna let it go, why not? I'll put it at the end though. See, this is the size I should be making the blocks because they root out in it either way. So just make them small enough so they just pop into the holes like that rather than, some of the blocks I've done are just monstrous. Like there's no point wasting that much. You can go half that much. Yeah, I've done a really good job of thinning these out. <laughs> oh well, two for one. So these channels pretty much end up being one propagator tray full, which is fantastic. It's the right amount. And they give me a couple of mistakes leeway as well. Beautiful. And I can just pop these over in the empty holes that I've got left in my other channel. All right, so I'm now just gonna turn the pump on so it's running water through the system. And then we can get to adding in the nutrient and making sure that the pH and the EC is correct. Now I'm aiming for an EC of about 1.5, so for that, I'm probably going to use a ratio of 0.5 grams per liter uh, for both. So I like to call this beer and idea time. Cheers. So I had an idea for emptying out this reservoir and it'll mean that I can empty it out with the pump without having to change any of the parts. So I take off the existing elbow and add on a tap here, maybe if I add it on the right way, that'll help. Did you know that taps have directions? <laughs> Legit, on these taps, there's an arrow with the correct direction of flow. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference, but it exists, so must do something. So to this, I need to add a little length of pipe, then I can have a, little, a length of hose running out this way, 
and this means that I can empty the res with this pump. We can touch this T down to the pump at the bottom, like that, and I can drill a hole here and have this hose coming out the side uh, with another tap on it, uh, and it can empty out the res. We can just slide this out. Well, now, when I want it to run normally, I turn this tap off and it runs up and into the Dutch buckets and back down through the return pipe. And when I want it to empty the res, I just turn that one on and it empties out this end of the bucket. So I don't ever have to pick up this res and empty it out. So let's try that. Let's turn it on. And there we have the res emptying without me lifting a finger, which is the way that I like to do things. <laughs> That's actually going really fast too. Stoked. I'm really happy with that. That's worked really well. And then all you have to do is I don't even need to fill this up with water because this will automatically top up with water. That's gonna empty way faster than this refills. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not worried at all about the amount of water I'm gonna lose here. Um, once that's empty, I can just turn it off, flick the taps back over, wait for it to fill, add in the nutrient, and you're good to go. All right, so that took about maybe two minutes. How good is that? So now I'm just going to turn the pump off, let it refill, and then we can add in the nutrient. Now, if you really wanted to make sure you got all the last dregs of the nutrient out, you could let this refill halfway, turn it back on for a little bit, and then uh, re-empty it, and then add the nutrient. But I really don't think that the amount of nutrient and water left in there now is gonna be anywhere near enough to affect the overall plant growth, so. <clears throat> now I won't forget to make sure that these taps are reset. So that one straight through up to the plants and this one in the off position. And that'll just mean that next time I turn the pump on or next time the pump cycles, because I actually won't need to turn it back on because it's on a timer, uh, it will flow through rather than emptying the res, which would be, uh, well, wouldn't be ideal. <laughs> so that NFT is still refilling, but uh, this is the cucumber, the pickling cucumber plant. And I just want to show you, it's actually getting some um, powdery mildew on the leaves. So I might remove a few of them. Get rid of those. It has been really humid. But this, this is what I wanted to show you. Oh man, I love pickling cucumbers. Look at that. I let it go a little bit long, but. Mm. Good, good cucumber. I don't plan on finishing this video today, um, but this is how the hooch buckets and hooch adapters are going. And they're going really well. Um, heaps of strawberries come through because I did think that some of the rootstock are dead and some of them are, but uh, some of them have surprised me as well. So jalapenos, I actually think maybe capsicums. Let's keep calling them jalapenos for now, uh, but they're doing really well. They're flowering and fruiting. So obviously I got to pollinating them in time and I'm really happy about that. I'll either be eating some spicy jalapenos or delicious capsicums. Right now, right now I'm really enjoying this pickling cucumber. Maybe I should call it an unpickled cucumber. Unpickling cucumber. Yeah. It's definitely unpickled. And a cucumber. Oh man, I let that go longer than I thought. Okay, so that's up to 500 liters. Um, and that's, I mean, that's a good amount. That will definitely last me a couple more grows. Uh, I think I had the last one up to I think I had the last one up to 500 litres as well. I got two grows out of the last one, and I could have got more if the ratio was right just by topping it up with water. Yeah, you definitely do not need uh, 500 litres for lettuce. Uh, I probably would have been happy with like two or three, 
and um, you could do it with a lot less if you topped up with water with a float valve. I just have an oversized res because I'm really lazy. So I'm gonna get the nutrient, mix it separately into hot water. So the Diamond Special Team, one bucket of hot water and the Nitro Cal in another. And for 500 liters, I'm gonna do 250 grams of each and throw it in there and my pH will be fine because it always is and go me. <laughs> All right, so here we are, 250 grams of each. Mixed in completely to hot water, black bucket so that you can see that it's dissolved completely, which this one hasn't. So I'll keep mixing that. This is just a brewer's spoon, I guess, uh, brewer's mixer. So I use that to mix my nutrient. I just missed that shot. Essentially, I poured it in there. You don't really need to see that. Uh, mix it up, and then uh, now we can check the EC and the pH. <laughs> uh. All right, so EC is 0.08. So I probably need a little bit more. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna let it run on 0.08 for a day or so, and then I'm gonna see if we need to top up, because uh, you can always add more, and I don't really want to add any more water. And the pH, because it's not exactly what I'm used to putting through it, 6.5. Beautiful. So I'm gonna leave that, uh, I'm gonna circulate the system, and then I'll come back in a day and test it again. Let's turn the pump on. And we can add in the nutrients for this reservoir too. So this is uh, 50 grams of each, uh, special tea and the calcium nitrate. And I'm just gonna add that into this reservoir, which is around about 50 liters. It's an 80 liter res, but uh, at the point where the top up tops up to plus the amount that goes through the buckets is about 50. So I'm just gonna add these in, mix that up. Leave it for a second. And now we can measure 2.4 to 2.8. So that's 2.6. And that's about perfect. Once this runs through, this will actually, hey buddy. <laughs> this will actually top up um, a little bit more. So that'll come down to about 2.2 to 2.4, um, which is about what I want it to be. Uh, because as the plants use up the nutrients, it will dilute and at about two is really where I want it ideally to be, but this gives me a bit of like laziness room. Uh, and they're in full fruit as well. So uh, I really want to make sure all the nutrients they need are there. The pH is 6.3, 6.2, 6.1, pretty much dead on six once that settles. Yep, six, happy with that too. So we're done here. The top ups are complete and I've made a new way to empty this res even easier than before. Stoked. And that's pretty much it for this episode of Hoochos. Uh, I know it was late and the filming time wasn't ideal, but you got a nap. <laughs> so all the systems are taken care of. I've added weight to the top of the potatoes, so they should push out more tubers or potatoes. Are potatoes tubers? I guess they are. And we've filled up the NFT as well as changing the res on the tomatoes uh, because it needed changing. S until now, so that entirety of growth has all been from uh, no res change. So I've just been topping up the nutrients. Obviously the water tops up automatically, but yeah. So I've just been topping up the nutrients as it drops and I got to the point where I started seeing some negative signs on some of the plants and I wanted to change the nutrient completely. So that's why I came up with that way of the double tap, turning the pump into an, a res drain and yeah, making life a little bit easier. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Hoochos. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking.